Act 2, Scene 1 The House of Antipholus of Ephesus Enter Adriana and Luciana Neither my husband nor the slave returned that in such haste I sent to seek his master. Sure, Luciana, it is two o'clock. Perhaps some merchant hath invited him, and from the mart he's somewhere gone to dinner. Good sister, let us dine and never fret. A man is master of his liberty. Time is their master, and when they see time they'll go or come. If so, be patient, sister. Why should their liberty than ours be more? Because their business still lies out a door. Look, when I serve him so, he takes it ill. Oh, no, he is the bridle of your will. There's none but asses will be bridled so. Why, headstrong liberty is lashed with woe. There's nothing situate under heaven's eye but hath his bound in earth, in sea, in sky. The beasts, the fishes, and the winged fowls are their male subjects and at their controls. Men, more divine, the masters of all these, lords of the wide world and wild watery seas, endued with intellectual sense and souls of more preeminence than fish and fowls, are masters to their females and their lords. Then let your will attend on their accords. This servitude makes you to keep unwed. Not this, but troubles of the marriage bed. But were you wedded, you would bear some sway. Ere I learn love, I'll practice to obey. How if your husband start some other where? Till he come home again, I would forbear. Patience unmoved. No marvel, though she pause. They can be meek that have no other cause. A wretched soul bruised with adversity, we bid be quiet when we hear it cry. But were we burdened with like weight of pain, as much or more would we ourselves complain. So thou, that hast no unkind mate to grieve thee, with urging helpless patience wouldst relieve me. But if thou live to see like right bereft, this fool-begged patience in thee will be left. Well, I will marry one day, but to try. Here comes your man. Now is your husband nigh. Enter Dromio of Ephesus. Say, is your tardy master now at hand? Nay, he's at two hands with me, and that my two ears can witness. <sighs> Say, didst thou speak with him? Knowst thou his mind? Ay, ay, he told me his mind upon my ear. Beshrew his hand, I scarce could understand it. Spake he so doubtfully thou couldst not feel his meaning? Nay, he struck so plainly, I could too well feel his blows, and withal so doubtfully that I could scarce understand them. But say, I prithee, is he coming home? It seems he hath great care to please his wife. Why, mistress, sure my master is horn-mad. Horn-mad, thou villain? I mean not cuckold mad, but sure he is stark mad. When I desired him to come home to dinner, he asked me for a thousand marks in gold. "'Tis dinner-time, quoth I, my gold, quoth he. Your meat doth burn, quoth I, my gold, quoth he. Will you come home, quoth I, my gold, quoth he. Where is the thousand marks I gave thee, villain? The pig, quoth I, is burned, my gold, quoth he. My mistress, sir, quoth I, hang up thy mistress, I know not thy mistress, out on thy mistress. Quoth who? Quoth my master. I know, quoth he, no house, no wife, no mistress. So that my errands due unto my tongue, I thank him, I bear home upon my shoulders, for in conclusion he did beat me there. Go back again, thou slave, and fetch him home. Go back again, and be new beaten home? For God's sake, send some other messenger. Back, slave, or I will break thy pate across. And he will bless that cross with other beating. Between you I shall have a holy head. Hence, prating peasant, fetch thy master home. Am I so round with you as you with me, that like a football you do spurn me thus? You spurn me hence, and he will spurn me hither. If I last in this service, you must case me in leather. Exit. Fie, how impatience loureth in your face! His company must do his minions grace, whilst I at home starve for a merry look. Hath homely age the alluring beauty took from my poor cheek? Then he hath wasted it. Are my discourses dull, barren, my wit? If voluble and sharp discourse be marred, unkindness blunts it more than marble hard. Do their gay vestments his affections bait? That's not my fault, he's master of my state. What ruins are in me that can be found by him not ruined? Then is he the ground of my defeatures? My decayed fair a sunny look of his would soon repair. But too unruly dear he breaks the pale and feeds from home. 
poor I am but his stale. Self-harming jealousy, fie, beat it hence. Unfeeling fools can with such wrongs dispense. I know his eye doth homage other wear, or else what lets it but he would be here? Sister, you know he promised me a chain. Would that alone, alone he would detain, so he would keep fair quarter with his bed. I see the jewel best enamelled will lose his beauty. Yet the gold bides still that others touch, and often touching will wear gold, and no man that hath a name by falsehood and corruption doth it shame. Since that my beauty cannot please his eye, I'll weep what's left away, and weeping die. How many fond fools serve mad jealousy! Exeunt. Scene two. A public place. Enter Antiphilus of Syracuse. The gold I gave to Dromio is laid up safe at the centaur, and the heedful slave is wandered forth in care to seek me out by computation and mine host's report. I could not speak with Dromio since at first I sent him from the mart. See, here he comes. Enter Dromio of Syracuse. How now, sir? Is your merry humour altered? As you love strokes, so jest with me again. You know no centaur. You receive no gold. Your mistress sent to have me home to dinner. My house was at the Phoenix. Wast thou mad that thus so madly thou didst answer me? What answer, sir? When spoke I such a word? Even now, even here, not half an hour since. I did not see you since you sent me hence, home to the centaur with the gold you gave me. Villain, thou didst deny the gold's receipt, and told me of a mistress and a dinner, for which I hope thou feltst I was displeased. I am glad to see you in this merry vein. What means this jest? I pray you, master, tell me. Yeah, dost thou jeer and float me at the teeth? Think'st thou I jest? Hold! Take that! And that! Beating him. Hold, sir! For God's sake! Now your jest is earnest. Upon what bargain do you give it me? Because that I familiarly sometimes do use you for my fool and chat with you, your sauciness will jest upon my love and make a comment of my serious hours. If you will jest with me, know my aspect and fashion your demeanour to my looks or I will beat this method in your sconce. Sconce, call you it? So you would have battering, I had rather have it ahead, and you use these blows long. I must get a sconce for my head and ensconce it too, or else I shall seek my wit in my shoulders. But I pray you, sir, why am I beaten? Dost thou not know? Nothing, sir, but that I am beaten. Shall I tell you why? Why, sir, and wherefore? For they say every why hath a wherefore. Why, first for floating me, and then wherefore for urging it the second time to me. Was there ever any man thus beaten out of season, when in the why and the wherefore is neither rhyme nor reason? Well, sir, I thank you. Thank me, sir? For what? Marry, sir, for this something that you gave me for nothing. I'll make you amends next to give you nothing for something. But say, sir, is it dinner time? No, sir. I think the meat wants that I have. In good time, sir, what's that? Basting. Well, sir, then twill be dry. If it be, sir, I pray you eat none of it. Your reason? Lest it make you choleric and purchase me another dry basting. Well, sir, learn to jest in good time. There's a time for all things. I durst have denied that before you were so choleric. By what rule, sir? Marry, sir, by a rule as plain as the plain bald pates of Father Time himself. Well, let's hear it. There's no time for a man to recover his hair that grows bald by nature. May he not do it by fine and recovery? Yes, to pay a fine for a periwig and recover the lost hair of another man. Why is time such a niggard of hair, being as it is so plentiful an excrement? Because it is a blessing that he bestows on beasts, and what he hath scanted men in hair, he hath given them in wit. Why, but there's many a man hath more hair than wit. Not a man of those, but he hath the wit to lose his hair. Why, thou didst conclude hairy men plain dealers without wit. The plainer dealer, the sooner lost, yet he loseth it in a kind of jollity. For what reason? For two, and sound ones too. Nay, not sound, I pray you. Sure ones, then. Nay, not sure, in a thing falsing. Certain ones, then. Mm, name them. 
the one to save the money that he spends in trimming, the other that at dinner they should not drop in his porridge. You would all this time have proved there is no time for all things. Marion did, sir. Namely, no time to recover hair lost by nature. But your reason was not substantial why there is no time to recover. Thus I mend it. Time himself is bald, and therefore to the world's end will have bald followers. I knew it would be a bald conclusion. But soft, who wafts us yonder? Enter Adriana and Luciana. I, I, Antiphilus, look strange and frown. Some other mistress hath thy sweet aspects. I am not Adriana, nor thy wife. The time was once when thou unurged wouldst vow that never words were music to thine ear, that never object pleasing in thine eye, that never touch well welcome to thy hand, that never meat sweet savoured in thy taste, unless I spake or looked or touched or carved to thee. How comes it now, my husband? Oh, how comes it that thou art thus estranged from thyself? Thyself I call it being strange to me, that undividable, incorporate, am better than thy dear self's better part. Ah, do not tear away thyself from me! For know, my love, as easy mayst thou fall a drop of water in the breaking gulf, and take unmingled that same drop again, without addition or diminishing, as take from me thyself, and not mean too. How dearly would it touch me to the quick, shouldst thou but hear I were licentious, and that this body, consecrate to thee by ruffian lust, should be contaminate! Wouldst thou not spit at me, and spurn at me, and hurl the name of husband in my face, and tear the stained skin from off my harlot brow, and from my false hand cut the wedding ring, and break it with a deep divorcing vow? I know thou canst, and therefore see thou do it. I am possessed with an adulterate blot, my blood is mingled with the crime of lust, for if we two be one, and thou play false, I do digest the poison of thy flesh, being strumpeted by thy contagion. Keep then far league and truce with thy true bed, I live unstained, thou undishonoured. Plead you to me, fair dame? I know you not, in Ephesus I am but two hours old as strange unto your town as to your talk, who every word by all my wit being scanned want wit in all one word to understand. Fie, brother, how the world is changed with you! When were you wont to use my sister thus? She sent for you by Dromeo home to dinner. By Dromeo? By me? By thee. And this thou didst return from him, that he did buffet thee, and in his blows denied my house for his, me for his wife. Did you con converse, sir, with this gentlewoman? What is the course and drift of your compact? I, sir, I, I never saw her till this time. Villain, thou liest, for even her very words didst thou deliver to me on the mart. I never spake with her in all my life. How can you thus then call us by our names? Unless it be by inspiration. How ill agrees it with your gravity to counterfeit thus grossly with your slave, abetting him to thwart me in my mood. Be it my wrong you are from me exempt, but wrong not that wrong with a more contempt. Come, I will fasten on this sleeve of thine. Thou art an elm, my husband, I a vine, whose weakness married to thy stronger state makes me with thy strength to communicate. If aught possess thee from me, it is dross, usurping ivy, briar, or idle moss, who, all for want of pruning, with intrusion infect thy sap, and live on thy confusion. To me she speaks. She moves me for her theme. What, was I married to her in my dreams? Or sleep I now, and think I hear all this? What error drives our eyes and ears amiss? Until I know this sure uncertainty, I'll entertain the offered fallacy. Dromeo, go bid the servants spread for dinner. Oh, for my beads! I'll cross me for a sinner. This is the fairy land. Oh, spite of spite! We talk with goblins, owls, and sprites. If we obey them not, this will ensue. They'll suck our breath, or pinch us black and blue. Why pratest thou to thyself, and answerest not? Dromeo, thou drone, thou snail, thou slug, thou sot! I am transformed, master, am I not? 
I think thou art in mind, and so am I. Nay, master, both in mind and in my shape. Thou hast thine own form. No, I am an ape. If thou art changed to aught, tis to an ass. Tis true. She rides me, and I long for grass. Tis so. I am an ass. Else it could never be, but I should know her as well as she knows me. Come, come, no longer will I be a fool to put the finger in the eye and weep, whilst man and master laugh my woes to scorn. Come, sir, to dinner. Dromeo, keep the gate. Husband, I will dine above with you to-day, and shrive you of a thousand idle pranks. Sirrah, if any ask you of your master, say he dines forth, and let no creature enter. Come, sister. Dromeo, play the porter well. Am I in earth? In heaven or in hell? Sleeping or waking mad or well advised? Known unto these, and to myself disguised? Huh, I'll say as they say, and persever so, and in this mist at all adventures go. Master, shall I be pulled through the gate? Ay, and let none enter, lest I break your pate. Come, come, Antiphilus, we dine too late. Exeunt. End of Act Two.